So this week was good, but it was very hectic because we were preparing for our very first craft show booth. So we started this week by building a new batch of walnut charcuterie boards, and hopefully that's the last batch we have to build uh, before we get into our new space. So here's some footage of that. I had to go to Home Depot because my belt broke. There was also a fight in the Home Depot between an employee and some random plumber. I didn't understand what they were fighting about, but I wish I would have recorded it for you. New day, new shirt. Uh, what is today? Wednesday? Yeah, it's Wednesday now. So before we get finished with the charcuterie boards today, I need to get the two new members of the stud stack processed. All right, Thomas and Igor, your cards are in the mail. Hopefully that's the last batch we build in our current space and the next one is in the new commercial space. Also, if you haven't seen our videos where we tour potential commercial spaces and choose all the details of what we want to go inside, definitely go check out those videos because those were a lot of fun for us. Yeah, go check them out. So while Davis was building those, I was selling charcuterie boards. I ended up selling 45 boards this last week, which totals a little over five grand, which is awesome. I sold them to like random people. I did realtors, mortgage brokers, friends, a couple different people, but it was awesome. Sold a bunch of them and got our name out. 
but we spent most of our week getting ready for our very first craft show. Well, technically it's not a craft show, it's a pop-up store, but it's the same concept. We have a booth, you have your stuff there, you're trying to sell it, there's people walking by, it's the same thing. Except with a pop-up store, you're the only one there. And we were kind of nervous because we have not done a craft show or a, really a booth or anything like that yet. So we had committed to bringing all of this or at least a portable version of it into a coffee shop. We were only gonna have like six to 10 feet of wall space to do everything that we've sacrificed the living room for. That means we had to take this laptop. That means we had to take a laser. That means we had to take packaging materials. That means we had to take the crinkle paper. That means we had to take boards. That means we had to take, we literally had to pack up everything that you see here, at least enough that we thought we could sell at this little pop-up store. And then we started thinking of all the what ifs, like what if we can't connect the laser to the Wi-Fi? What if their Wi-Fi isn't fast enough or good enough? What if we can't find an outlet close enough to plug the Glowforge in? What if it takes too long? What if it doesn't work? What if it burns too deep? What about the exhaust of the Glowforge? Is the whole coffee shop gonna fill full of smoke? What if we sell oh. out of stuff? What are we gonna tell the customers? How are we gonna take payments? We don't have a little card reader. All of these <laughs> wonderful questions, we had to have an answer before we showed up. So with all of that in the air, I knew one thing was for sure, we we needed to go get the other Glowforge out of storage. I didn't wanna disassemble everything we had going on here. I wanted to use our backup Glowforge, plus it needed to get out, get some exercise. So I went and picked it up first. Okay, so think through the process of like actually making one of these boards all the way through. So they're gonna be pre-finished, we'll already have the feet on them, but we need the tape. And then we'll bring the finish, but we don't need to pack that now because we're gonna pre-finish all these boards. We need to keep the gloves out, keep the drill and all the feet. We got a busy night ahead of us. Yeah. All right, well, I think that is everything ready to go. Got it all. Now we just gotta pack up in the morning. We can't forget the Glowforge. It's no! In, it's in the garage. I'm gonna make myself a note and put it like right on the fridge. Well, we'll see how this goes. This is our first actual like show thing. I guess yeah. next time you see us, we'll be unboxing everything and setting it all up. Yeah. All right, well, we're here. This we're is our set little up. setup. Got the laser going on some conversation starters. So far, it's been a lot of fun. We've met a couple new people. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's so funny. It's like some people are really interested in the laser, and then some people are really interested in the boards. And it's almost funny. We're like making predictions on who's going to focus on what. Yeah before they walk over here, but <laughs> just something to keep the time passing by. Yeah. Been doing a bunch of engravings. I got it in slow mode right now, just doing practice engravings. So for those of you that hate the Glowforge, yes, it can go slower. <laughs> <laughs> So we did this pop-up shop in a coffee shop in River Oaks, which is one of the like bougier, kind of wealthier areas of Houston. It actually worked out really well because I met the owner a few months ago while I was just going there for coffee, asked if we could do a pop-up shop and they agreed. And we had so much fun at this pop-up store. We were there for about six hours, but we must have talked to about 200 different people. One of which was Michael. And he came out just to say hi, meet us. We put out on our Jenny and Davis Instagram that we were gonna do a quick little meetup before we started the pop-up store. And he came out and gave us the coolest gifts ever that he made. <gasps> See, isn't that cool? Anyways, super awesome guy. You should definitely go check him out. His business is called Blue Fire Laser. Michael, it was awesome to see you. Thank you again so much for the awesome coffee mugs. So after six hours of standing and meeting people and talking to people, we only sold one board. And we sold the board to friends that we already knew wanted one for their family for Christmas, and they were just gonna buy it and pick it up there in the store. 
And to be honest with you, we knew that this pop-up store was failed before we even started. It was definitely the wrong product at the wrong place at the wrong time. Nobody's gonna stop their morning just trying to get the first cup of coffee down and buy a $200 customized cutting board. I mean, some of these people were still in their pajamas. The last thing they wanted to do was to go Christmas gift shopping. We also just did not advertise for this event, like at all. We did a couple of Instagram stories on our small Samara Instagram account, which only has, what, like 600 followers? So we did not generate any sort of media buzz or get anybody excited about this event. It, it, it was just, it was doomed to fail from the beginning. So why in the world did we even do this? I mean, I sold 45 boards this week using nothing but a cell phone. Why did I need to pack up all of this stuff to just sell one board? I wasn't trying to sell boards. I was trying to get practice. Practice getting known. Because the best product does not win. The best known product wins every time. And after all was said and done, over 200 people now know who we are. Real people, not woodworkers, not other people that aren't gonna buy from us, but actual wealthy people in Houston know who we are. They're, they're warmed up to us now. And if we continue to meet people in the wealthier parts of Houston and we keep doing things like this, then it's just a matter of time until we get a colossal order with lots of attention. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the player, stick to the player, ask me how I